Welcome, welcome back to Dini Help at C squared. In this example, we have to use this uh, function f of x, which is defined as a piecewise function. And you notice we have f of x equals to negative 2x plus 3. If x is less than 1, that is one piece. And the other one, f of x equals 3x minus 2 if x is greater or equals 1. And the first thing we need to do on part A is to find f of negative 1. For that reason, we're going to look at negative 1 belongs to the first piece of the piecewise function, or number less than 1, so that's the piece I'm going to use, negative 2 times negative 1 plus 3, and that will be positive 2 plus 3, and that will be 5. f of negative 1 is 5, or as another point, we have negative 1 and 5. Um, f of 3, the next one. 3 is a number that is greater or equals 1, it's greater, so we're going to use this piece of the piecewise function, so we're going to have 3 times 3 minus 2, that will make 9 minus 2, and that will be 7. f of 3 is 7, so we end up here with 3 and 7 as an order uh, pair. Find the domain of the function, for that reason you have to look to the two pieces and if you notice one piece is less than one the other one x greater or equals one so in fact we have here as a domain all real numbers and that in interval notation is negative infinity infinity in case you need it locate any intercept so as you know we have x intercept and y intercept for the y intercept in order to find that, we get x equals 0, and that may uh, tells us we need to use this part of the piecewise function because 0 is less than 1. So we have f of 0 equals negative 2 times 0 plus 3, and we end up with 3. So the intercept is 0 and 3. For the y-intercept, which uh, for the x-intercept, which means y is 0, we're going to make the function 0, and that will give us two choices. One, 0 equals negative 2x plus 3, which goes with this part of the piecewise function, and the other one will be 0 equals, obviously, the second part, 3x minus 2. And that goes with this axis. Okay, so let's solve each equation. And uh, the first one, you're going to subtract 3, and we get negative 3 equals negative 2x. Divide by negative 2 both sides, so we end up with 3 halves. So now I'm going to take a look to these 3 halves. And remember, this is the first part of the piecewise function, when the number are less than 1. And this number is not less than 1. So it is not a a good value for us is not an intercept. We're going to use the same thing for the second equation. We're going to solve it and we have 2 equals 3x and divide by 3 we end up with x equals 2 thirds and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look if this guy belongs to this part of the piecewise function and we notice 2 thirds is not a number that is greater or equals 1. So again this is not an x intercept in our case. So in fact this function now we know that it does not have an x intercept. And we can move to the next part. On part d we need to grab the function. For that reason I'm going to use some of the information we have from the previous uh, part. And if we take a look, we have one, negative 1 and 5. We have 3 and 7. And as you know, as you notice, this well, the first one belongs to the first part of the piecewise function, the first piece and the second one to the second part. Uh, then we have also that 0 and 3, the uh, y-intercept. And that belongs to the first part, right? Number less than 1. And these two pieces are lines, so we need one more for here. 
and it makes sense to pick x equals 1, so we're going to do f of 1, which is going to be 3 times 1 minus 2, and that will be 3 minus 2, which is 1. So when x equals 1, the function is 1, and we have enough information to at least get something on, the, on this graph. Let's uh, plot these points, negative 1 and 5, which is right here. Um, 0 and 3, and in this moment we can we can draw this left side of the function. Uh, if you need more points, uh, you probably already notice what the pattern is. Right, I can put one more. Here. Okay. I'm gonna stop here for a moment with the left side, number less than one, and I'm gonna look now to the right side, and I'm gonna plot one and one. And since this one is greater or equal, you really want to do a full dot. And then we have 3 and 7, which is right here. We have these two points. And in fact, we can put one more because the slope of this line is 3. So I, we can use this pattern. Okay. And now you notice we have here a problem, a gap between 0 and 1. What's happened between 0 and 1? The function between 0 and 1 behaves like this. But I'm going to plug this one in this piece, even though x cannot be 1 in that piece. So we have f of 1, and that will be negative 2 times 1 plus 3. We end up also with 1. So, in fact, here these two branches meet, and this is the graph we have. You can see a better graph here. And now we can move to part E. Based on the graph, find the range. For finding the range, uh, and if you have the graph, take a look to um, lowest value in this case, the minimum, which is right here. We notice that is 1, and then we notice we can get 2, 3, 4, and so on. So the range is any number, greater or equals 1, or if you need the interval notation, 1 and infinity well, bracket at one if uh, parentheses at infinity and the last thing is f of x continuous on its domain on all real number and you notice there are no gaps holes so this function is continuous on its domain and that's it if you enjoyed this video clip don't forget to click the like button and come back on c squared for more help thank you